A small cheese pizza with coke, please, came the order from the lady at the register. And please be quick. After her order, there was only one customer left. Understandable since it was pretty late. A man with a dark buzz coat and a decent stubble. He walks over to the register and eyes me carefully. Hey, he says, in what he probably thinks is a seductive way, but I answer sternly. May I take your order, sir? Of course you can, he laughs, showing all his golden teeth. He orders and sits down by himself on a table. I serve him his pizza and I'm about to leave when he grabs me by the wrist. Let go, I say in a tone I'd usually use with a dog. He shakes his head. Keep me company. No, I have to work, I reply. I search around the restaurant but see nobody but us. The man looks around the restaurant himself and clicks his tongue. There's nobody here. Who are you going to serve? I knew he made sense, of course, but I snatched away my arm. I still have work to do, I bark. He laughs and then takes a slice of pizza. You want? I want to say no thanks, but instead I don't say anything. I silently make my way towards the kitchen where the cook was. That motherfucker. I say to her, nodding at the man through the window. I creep. I hope he leaves soon. But he doesn't leave. He sits there, smacking down his pizza slowly. Suddenly, he takes out a pack of cigarettes and puffs one. I knew what he was playing at. I approach him and say quietly, Sir, it's strictly prohibited to smoke in here. I'll have to ask you to leave. He says nothing. His eyes are dark and suddenly he grabs my arm again. Harder this time and starts dragging me away. I scream, but I know that cook couldn't hear me because she keeps her headphones on full volume. The man drags me into the parking lot. He approaches a particular grubby old Volvo and opens the door. Get in there. No, I... I, I went in pain as he squishes my arm tighter. I said, get in there. I have no choice but to climb into the old car. The back seat smells gross and it's covered in food and used tissues. The man sat at the driver's seat at the front. So, honey, he says in a soothing voice, let's teach you some manners. You bastard, I spit, wiping my mouth. I'll call the police. Oh, my sweet, you won't have a chance. He grins as he pulls out my phone and waves it in the air. My eyes feel like they're about to pop out of my skull. I pat down my pockets, obviously they're empty. Bitch! I scream. But there's nobody outside except an old minivan parked across from this guy's. My chest squeezes tighter and tighter, and there's no air. Oh gosh, I can't breathe. The minivan's headlights suddenly blur. My chest feels a little lighter. I keep screaming and a man climbs out the minivan. He's tall with a hat on. He has a nice dark suit and a bag in his hand. The man sees him too, and his face pales. He tries to peel out of the lot, but the other guy waves his hand and yells, STOP RIGHT THERE! And he does, because he has no choice, or he'll run this guy over. When the other guy approaches, he looks a lot younger than I thought, maybe early twenties. He stares at the both of us with icy blue eyes and knocks on the window. The old man rolls it down and growls, WHAT YOU WANT? The guy, who looks like a businessman from a fine company, ignores him and looks at me. You okay, miss? I shake my head frantically. No! No, this man, he... The guy looks back at the man. Care to explain? And I was just... Can't you mind your own business? He tries to roll the window back down, but the other guy roars. I'll call the police if you don't stop right now. You hear me? Fuck, the old man yells. What do you want from me? Again, the younger guy ignores him and says to me, Maybe you should call a friend to come pick you up. But my phone's there, right on the lap of the older guy. I point to the... The businessman notices it and smatches it from him and gives it to me. I smile at him, and I'm out for thank you while I call my friend. She doesn't pick up. I call somebody else. She doesn't pick up either. Shit, I say under my breath, and the businessman frowns. The other guy is just staring at him with fury in his eyes. What's wrong? Asks the younger guy, still staring at me with his eyes. My friend isn't picking up. Call a taxi, maybe? I want to, but I just can't. I just can't not after this incident with this old guy. What if the cab driver kidnaps me too? I shake my head. The older guy spits at me. Get the fuck out of my car. I almost laugh at this because he was the one who was trying to kidnap me a moment ago. I obey and I step out of the car. He peels out the lot and yells over his shoulder. Fuck you! The businessman shakes his head. I'm so glad that I saw you. Yeah. I breathe, trying to call my friend again. Thank you so much. I look back at the restaurant hoping Cook's still there. But everything's closed and the lights are off. I sigh. Maybe you need a ride home? The guy asks slowly when I look at him. He puts his hands up. Sorry, you don't have to. I'm not trying to make you, you know, take it to my house or anything like that. I try my friend once again and give up. 
I look at the man and his smooth skin, his icy blue eyes and his hat. He looks a little feminine, but a businessman. He's like that uncle that everybody seems to love. Okay, I say. He smiles and we start walking to his minivan. The cold air blows in my face and my legs are still shaking from what happened. I'm Edward, by the way, he says, and I'm not surprised. He does look like an Edward, but you can call me Ed for short. Thanks, Ed, I say slowly. I'm Penny. I stop right there in the road. My heart hammers into my chest and I feel a little bit queasy as another thought hits me. Can I really trust this man to take me home? How can I be sure that his intentions are pure? He must have read my mind because he looks at the floor and exhales. If you don't feel comfortable going with me, I don't mind. I really don't care, to be honest. I just want you to be safe and take you to the safety of your home. You don't have to come with me if you don't want to. I don't reply. Look, he says, his eyes darting around, searching my face. I mean no harm. You don't have to come with me. You can stay with somebody on a call, maybe. All the way home, I really don't mind. But I could just drive away right now. Maybe right here in this empty parking lot at midnight on a Wednesday. Everybody's asleep. Nobody's here. Do you want to stay on your own? This seemed kind of like threatening to me, but I sighed as I think it over. I'm a huge overthinker, and right now isn't the best time to eliminate all my best hopes. It's alright, I mutter. I I I'll come with you. A warm smile tugs across the man's lips when we begin walking back to his minivan. I climb into the back, call my friend once again, but none of them pick up. I exhale in frustration. The guy tuts. Not picking up, are they? He says, one flick of the finger. He's locked all the doors. My heart jumps into my chest and it's hard to breathe again. I made sure of that. I felt the colour drain from my face. What the fuck? You're a fool. He gives a heartless laugh, but his icy eyes are still staring in front of me at the front mirror. Can't go around trusting everybody. My grip on my phone tightens as I dial 911. He sees me and laughs. It rings, but nobody answers. Everything seems to turn dark for a second. The police won't be any help, he says once again. They won't even pick up. And I made sure your phone battery was low when I rescued you from that other guy too. He continues. Even if they do pick up, what will they do? Huh? They'll waste time to come here, and the officer will ask you what happened. You'll tell him I was trying to kidnap you. Will he believe you though? With my shiny look? My voice shakes as I say quietly. They might. Yeah, yeah, he waves his hand dismissively, still staring at me. They might. But think this over carefully, girl. Will they believe a 17-year-old working girl at a restaurant, or a 23-year-old shiny, innocent, perfect-looking businessman? My chest begins to squeeze in on itself as suddenly my phone freezes and then dies. My throat closes in and tears prickle in my eyes. What do you want from me? I whisper, looking around. No other cars, no other people. The restaurant's closed. I don't want anything from you, the man says. I just need you. You'll be worth a lot. They usually like them blonde and pretty. You'll be like a meal to them. With that, he laughs and the car lurches forward. For one last time, he looks back at me with those clear blue eyes and whispers. The thing is, if you'd have just gone with the other guy earlier, you probably would have been a lot safer. Credit to Alama2007 for putting that story on Reddit in the no sleep section. That's where I get a lot of my um, shorter stories. Um, I hope you enjoyed it, guys. I've been Gilliboy Jr. And I'll most definitely see you very soon. Bye-bye now.